legislative and municipal elections underway in El Salvador. 50 migrants die off the coast of Libya. And fresh clashes erupt between Houthi fighters and Yemeni government forces. Hello and welcome to Telesur. I'm Jose Daniel Lopez in Quito, Ecuador, and this is from the south. Salvadorans turned out to the polls in the capital to cast their vote at over 8,000 polling stations set up nationwide. Over 5.4 million people are called to elect the 84 members of the Legislative Assembly, 262 mayors and 20 deputies for the Central American Parliament. Thousands of soldiers, police and international observers have been deployed to oversee the ballot. These observers come from institutions such as the Organization of American States, the European Union, and the World Association of Electoral Bodies. In previous weeks, political tensions grew high after the killing of sympathizers of the Farabundo Marti National Liberation Front. In previous days, electoral officials indicated that preliminary results will be announced at midnight on Sunday. Everyone's expectation is that things will change in one way or another. We all have our expectations, our ideals, and let's hope that we can really have an impact on the reality of the country. Venezuela's President Nicolás Maduro has called for a review of diplomatic relations with Spain following the visit of Spanish Foreign Minister Aranchas González to Colombia's border regions. The president accused González of being in favor of a xenophobic message, which in his opinion is promoted by the government of Colombia. Enough is enough. We are going to thoroughly review the whole relationship with Spain at all levels. Enough of this aggression. We warned the Spanish government in time. Our foreign minister warned the Spanish government on time. We are going to respond strongly to any aggression that comes our way. Be it in word, be it in action, be it diplomatic, be it political. Enough hypocrisy. Enough hypocrisy, enough abuse, enough double standards of the Spanish foreign minister favoring the Colombian paramilitaries, favoring the Colombian government, and the murders and massacres. Eleven people, including a minor, have been killed in Mexico's Jalisco state after an identified gunman opened fire on a street in a residential area. The state prosecutor's office said that the bodies of ten men were found outside a home in Tonala, a municipality in the Guadalajara area, with uh, another dead man discovered inside. Jalisco, where a, a former governor was shot dead in December, is one of the epicenters of Mexico's drug-related warfare at, uh, and home to the infamous Jalisco New Generation cartel. We would be speaking about 11 people dead and two wounded who are currently receiving medical attention. From the trajectory of the projectiles, which number more than 70 between short and long arms, it can be seen that the people were sitting on a bench, apparently waiting to be paid for their week's work, when suddenly two vehicles arrived. And from the trajectories, it could appear to be a crossfire. We are going to wait for the survey of the experts to see the trajectories. Dozens of people have rallied in the Brazilian capital, Brasilia, to protest against new measures put in place to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Brazilian cities and states have been imposing a new run of restrictions in a bid to contain a surge of COVID-19 cases threatening to overwhelm the already stretched hospitals. Uh, Brazil, whose death toll passed 250,000 Thursday, is struggling to deal with a rising number of infections that had pushed intensive care units to the verge of collapse. The first shipment of medical oxygen has arrived in Peru from Chile to help relieve a shortage of COVID-19 patients. According to health authorities, the demand for oxygen has increased by 200% and this first batch will go to six hospitals in Lima and nearby cities. For the month of February, almost 200 COVID-19 patients have died every day in Peru, four times more than in December amid the second wave of the pandemic. According to official figures, almost 100,000 people have contracted COVID-19, 15,000 of which are hospitalized. 
It has just crossed the border. It is now going to spend the night here in this post, the border complex of Santa Rosa. They are going to do all the necessary formalities and tomorrow they will start their journey to Lima, which is their final destination. This is a purchase by the Peruvian state. It has bought 960 tons of oxygen, which will be arriving periodically, in principle every week. We don't know yet, at a rate of 40 tons at a time. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has eased the country's uh, coronavirus lockdown following a reduction in the number of new infections. Based on an assessment of the current state of the pandemic in the country, cabinet, after various levels of consultation with our provinces and our metro mayors, cabinet has decided earlier today to move the country from coronavirus alert level three to alert level one. The new alert level will come into effect later this evening once the regulations have been gazetted. At least 15 migrants have drowned after their boat uh, capsized of Libya. A spokeswoman for the International Organization for Migration say at least 110 migrants boarded a rubber boat from the Libyan coastal town of Sawilla on Friday. She said the boat started to sink early on Sunday and the Libyan Coast Guard managed to rescue at least 95 migrants, including six women and two children. Just last week, 41 migrants died after the boat sank in the same waters. Gunmen in Nigeria have released uh, uh, 42 people, including 27 students who were kidnapped from a boarding school last week in the north central state of Niger. Uh, their release comes just a day after a separate raid on a school in the Sanfara state saw gunmen abduct more than 300 girls. Kidnappings by armed groups are common across many northern Nigerian states. The recent attacks have also raised concerns about increasing violence by armed, armed gangs and Islamist insurgents. In fact, the Jiraiz group Boko Haram frequently carries out, carries out abductions in Nigeria's turbulent northeast. They were rescued early this morning at about 4 a.m. in the morning. And I can confirm that all rescued victims from uh, Kagara Science College are here, 38 in number. Even though we have one still in the hospital suffering from excessive exhaustion. They are back here with us peacefully. They've been medically uh, checked. And I believe uh, the medical team will monitor them for a few more days, back soon with their families. This is a joint effort with our security agencies, our traditional rulers, and other major stakeholders. And speaking during his weekly Sunday Mass address in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican, Pope Francis described the kidnapping of the schoolgirls as vile. I join the bishops of Nigeria in condemning this vile abduction of 317 young girls taken away from their school in Janjebe, northwest of the country. We pray for these girls so they can be back home soon. At least two people were killed after security forces went to arrest Chad's opposition candidate Yaya Dilo at his home on Sunday morning. Dilo, who plans to run against President Idris Deby in a presidential election in April, told journalists that he was attacked at home by members of the presidential guard and that five uh, family members were killed, including his mother. A statement by the government claimed that the security forces who had gone to Dilo's house to arrest him for disobeying a court order only opened fire in self-defense after his bodyguards shot at them. Western Sahara's Polisario Front has accused the United Nations of not doing enough to stop Morocco's occupation of the North African country. The movement's Secretary General Katri Addo lamented that the UN has failed to reprimand the Moroccan government's recent decision to deploy the troops to the dispute territory. Morocco has been in conflict with the group over the Western Sahara since 1975 
after the Spanish occupation ended. Rabat insists on his right to govern the region, having proposed autonomous rule under its sovereignty, while the Polisario Front wants, to, uh, wants a referendum to let the people determine the future of the region. Morocco could not have done what it did without the support of the international community, the support of the UN, the Security Council, and the UN Secretary General. Morocco is, of course, responsible for its actions. It is the UN that bears great responsibility for Morocco's actions. The Sahrawis living in the occupied territories have been celebrating this anniversary for weeks to show the world that the Sahrawi people are united and agree on a single idea, which is combat and sacrifice. I believe that the Sahrawi people return to the armed struggle with great hope of realizing their desire for freedom and independence. We also denounce what the United States, Morocco and all nations that do not wish to see Sahrawi people free. A civil coalition of Tunisian activists have called for the legalization of cannabis for medical and recreational purposes in the North African country. The coalition said it was consulting with parliamentarians to develop a legal framework for the production and consumption of marijuana. Under the proposal, the state will reserve the sole right to produce and distribute cannabis. The coalition has argued that the move will pr provide huge financial returns given the number of uh, users who now buy it illegally. We are a group of entities that militate for the cause of cannabis, and in particular, the legalization of cannabis. There are associations, personalities. We have worked on the issue from a specific point of view. And from a social and societal angle, we ended up adopting the main idea of legalizing cannabis as a solution and remedy for drug use in Tunisia. Dozens of protesters were injured in Bangladesh as new clashes erupted between the police and demonstrators in a third day of protests inspired by the death of Mustak Ahmed, a prominent writer and government critic in jail. Student activists from the main opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party threw rocks and attacked officers with bamboo sticks and plastic pipes, prompting police to retaliate by firing rubber bullets and tear gas. The BNP spokesman Rizvi Ahmed said about three, uh, 30 students activists of the party, including a senior leader, were injured in the clashes. Several policemen were also hurt, including an officer who was rushed to the hospital. At least three people have been killed in the southern Myanmar city of Dawei when riot police cracked down on protesters who were demonstrating against last uh, month's military coup. According to local media, about 18 people were also arrested during the protests. Myanmar security forces have been using tear gas and rubber bullets to disperse protesters who had remained in the streets almost every day since the overthrow of Aung San Suu Kyi, elected government on February 1st. The Philippines has received its first batch of COVID-19 vaccines Sunday, among the last in the Southeast Asia to secure the critical doses, despite having the second highest number of coronavirus infections and deaths in the region. A Chinese military transport aircraft carrying 600,000 doses donated by China arrived at an airbase in the capital. Vaccinations initially of health workers and top officials led by the health secretary were scheduled to start in six Manila hospitals Monday. Aside from the donated vaccines from Sinovac, the government has separated order 25 million doses from the China-based China company. President Rodrigo Duterte and top cabinet officials welcomed the delivery of the vaccine. We welcome this day with high hopes of finally ending the COVID-19 pandemic in our country. Today, we make another step towards an ongoing fight against COVID-19 as we receive 600,000 coronavac doses from the, Philippine, from the People's Republic of China. I convey my sincere gratitude to the Chinese people and the government of China for this gesture of friendship and solidarity, the hallmark of Philippine-China partnership. The Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has hailed China's COVID-19 vaccine candidates as he sought to assure citizens of their effectiveness. 
Orban, who has already been injected with the Sinopharm jab, indicated that his government hoped to boost its vaccination program by using shots developed in China and Russia as he trusts them. Last week, Hungary became the first uh, European country to begin using Chino, uh, China's Sinopharm vaccine. The third wave is attacking us, and it will be stronger than the previous two ones. Please register and get vaccinated. This is the only possible way of protection, just like the tens of thousands of Hungarians in Bokhodina. Thousands here in Hungary have already received this Chinese vaccine. Trust the Hungarian experts. U.S. President Joe Biden said his administration will make an announcement regarding Saudi Arabia on Monday following the declassifi declassification of his intelligence report that implicated uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in the killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. This comes as the Biden administration faced criticism over its failure to take tougher measures against the Crown Prince instead of sanctioning average Saudi e citizens. Khashoggi, a U.S. resident who wrote opinion columns for the Washington Post, critical of her prince's policies, was killed on and dismembered by a team of Saudi operatives in the Kingdom's consulate in Istanbul in October two, uh, 2018. Yemen's Houthi rebels have uh, claimed responsibility for the attempt drone strike that targeted Saudi Arabia's capital Riyadh on Saturday night. The drone air forces and ballistic missile forces have carried out an important joint attack in the deep inland of Saudi Arabia. The operation was carried out with a ballistic missile type, Zal Fikar, and 15 drones. Our operation will continue and will expand as long as the aggression and the siege on our country continues. Meanwhile, fighting in Yemen's Marif province between government forces and Houthi rebels uh, has killed around 50 combats, including a special forces commander. Earlier this month, the Houthi uh, Suma push to capture Marbi City, 120 kilometers east of the capital Sana'a. Yemen has been embroiled in a bloody power struggle since 2014 between the government supported by Saudi Arabia and Houthi rebels who control Sana'a and most of the north. <laughs> Iraqi Foreign Minister Faoud Hussein has visited Iran for the second time this month to discuss, among other issues, rising tensions in the region. Hussein met with his Iranian counterpart, Muhammad Javad Sarif. Posting on his Twitter account after the meeting, Sarif said he had said talks focus on expanding regional ties and international cooperation. They also agreed to reject the United States aggression against Iraqi forces. And we come to the end of this news brief. You can find this and many other stories in our website at telesurenglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Jose Dani Lopez. Thank you for watching.